in case anybody finds this, we're currently drifting out in the North Atlantic Ocean. We have limited food and supplies and water. There's no wind. We don't, not currently running our engine, but um, just hoping no land in sight at this point. So I, I'm hoping that we get through the night. So just hoping for the best. So first of all, we want to say that we are okay and that we made it through that trip just fine. Don't want everybody to worry. Um, this is kind of the untold story of that trip. And uh, I think we should start it off by kind of stepping back to the beginning of that trip. Um, that was... I had just completed the solo sail from St. Lucia to Puerto Rico, and then that is where Mel and Lynn met up with me to continue on and go from uh, Puerto Rico to Florida. Yeah, we flew to Puerto Rico from Florida, and Mel and I got to spend a day uh, kind of touring around Puerto Rico. I had been there before, but Mel hadn't. So got to show her some of the things that I saw from one of our trips before. And then we went down to the boat and uh, <clears throat> Daniel was in charge of all the systems on the boat and fuel, <laughs> making sure <laughs> everything on the boat was good to go. And Mel and I were in charge of provisioning. Um, both of us could have done better. <laughs> that was it. We learned a lot. We learned sure. a lot. Monje to Zongi, hands are trembling right now. Right now. Deep blue water sea, afraid of jumping in right now. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm better than so. This is our first kind of day on the boat. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. It's a little thing I will say for Mel, I felt really bad, you know, she had done some sailing, but for her first trip sailing with us, leaving out of Puerto Rico was through the Mona Passage, which is a notoriously hard passage to traverse. We were going through it from uh, east to west, which is less harsh than the opposite direction so it was 
Uh, we kind of threw her into the fire on that one because we, we started off in the evening uh, after 5 p.m. So sun was setting. We were going through the Mona Passage at night and uh, and the weather it was it was rough <laughs> also neither of us had been on the boat for some time so usually the first one to three days back under sail you're not usually feeling well <laughs> so yes we all got sick so, so we're sick <laughs> it was it was a rough night yes yeah. <laughs> Uh, pull out the main, but it's going to be just not all the way. It's going to yeah. be just a reef main. Yeah. So, uh, here is the first of her noise. It's just something like that. That's one thing. I hope. So, then, there we are. Uh, forward. Okay. And basically, I'm just letting it out okay. on more cold. Okay, they are found in their counter to each other when we need the sail to go in. Well, why did it fit the same? What is it's in? No, it's just ice cream or Okay. So, here, yeah. here, and here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All the way down. Yeah. 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 So go ahead. Thing one is what is keeping the coil. Okay. We don't want to pull it all the way out. So. I'll keep it, I'll keep it from the wind from just one. Okay. Ready then? Yep. Right towards as the sun was going down on the uh, for the second night and we heard the engine kind of fluctuate and uh, and I was like well that's kind of weird and so I went to check our fuel levels and I my heart dropped because we, we, it showed empty like we had no fuel we were a day into this uh, trip and the trip was from the first leg of it was from Puerto Rico to Turks and Caicos So it's supposed to be 48 hours non-stop sailing Yep Through the nights <laughs> to Turks and Caicos so, so we were just north of Dominican Republic uh, And the engine with the engine didn't die, but I turned it off as soon as we I saw that the that we didn't have any fuel and I kind of took a quick assessment of what that meant for us and we kind of did a, a, a situation analysis if you will uh, with no fuel that meant we were not able to motor we had sails and we were we could sail uh, but our generator runs off of diesel and so that meant uh, we could not run the generator either so no power to recharge our batteries uh, we only had solar to and that was only during the day so we had um, we had to make sure that our power usage was very minimal <laughs> uh, which also meant that we did were not able to use our Starlink. We weren't able to communicate with anybody uh, other than uh, outside the VHF radio. We were well stocked with food um, and after 
Taking the assessment of our situation, we had several options. We could divert to Dominican Republic, which would mean turning into the wind and into the current, and it would be a very rough sail to try to make it to the Dominican Republic. Or we could continue on. We had the wind to our back and we had the current with us, and we could continue on to Turks and Caicos and that is what we ultimately decided to do. Also because we hadn't really been, none of us had been to the Dominican Republic and we usually try to research places before we go. We were like, mm -hmm, let's just use our sails and continue on our designated path at a much slower, <laughs> slower pace. It was a slower pace, uh, having no power or limited power only during the day also meant that we couldn't use our autopilot. Uh, we couldn't use it at night anyways. We actually could use it during the day, but at night we had to hand steer. And so we had to start thinking about uh, what kind of shifts we needed to take uh, during that time. I look back at it and it was, it was pretty incredible um, that we were able to do that sail. We also had to sail onto anchor. We had to sail through uh, a narrow passage way when we got to Turks and Caicos that through the reefs and we had to make sure that we didn't hit any coral heads or anything. Um, all while only having sail, and that Which was... Which we had never done before. We hadn't done it, and it was... It definitely tested us. I, I'm really proud of how we handled it and how we came through the whole ordeal. And the main thing was that I definitely don't ever want to be in that situation again. <laughs> Yeah. At night, we only had on the lights and we, the bilge pump we kept on. We didn't have the lights. We had our headlamps. I mean, like the... Oh, oh our navigation, navigation lights. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Navigation lights and the bilge pump. And did we even have navigation? We did. We were able to leave our navigation on yeah. the entire time, which was a big plus. We well. left the navigation <laughs> on so we knew where we were going. Um, we were all very communic communicative. We were all like, this is when we'd switch. We were like, this is our heading. You know, this is where we're trying to get. Yeah, we worked really good. And uh, we went two nights like that because it was right as the sun was setting on the second night where we had to shut everything down. So we had that night, the whole next day, and then the next night again where we had to hand steer um, before we even got to yeah. the Turks. We ended up we ended up pulling into Grand Turks about eighteen hours, eighteen to 20 hours after our initial expected arrival time, which would have been uh, Sunday night. Yeah, Sunday evening. We were, we were shooting for five or six o'clock on Sunday. We didn't end up pulling up and anchoring until one or two on Monday. And that wasn't even the end of it because we had just entered Turks and Caicos. We weren't able, we still didn't have fuel. We had to get checked in before we could even buy fuel. Um, and uh, so it was a whole ordeal to try and find the customs office. It's so cute. Ooh, we have to explain what happened with the diesel. Uh, so the what had happened is when I had finished the solo sail from St. Lucia to Puerto Rico, I had done it on a single tank of gas. And, I'm, and so from Puerto Rico to Turks and Caicos was the same same distance and I, and we should have 
been able to make that trip with the same amount of fuel and and um what it boils down to is when i left the boat in puerto rico before before we continued on i topped off or i thought i topped off the fuel tank and what ended up happening is the fuel had bubbled up the the filler hose um back up to the to the nozzle and i had at that point thought that the fuel tank was full because it was like coming back because up. it came back up yeah. and what actually happened is it it's kind of like uh when you fill up a soda drink at the restaurant and it bubbles up and overflows that's what happens with the diesel fuel too and i didn't realize that that had is what had happened um so then when it went back down it was not full <laughs> yeah it was definitely not full yeah um, we had enough for about 24 hours yep. of motoring um, um well and we're new to this right? yeah so this was a huge <laughs> we've had ptsd since the yeah, experience yeah. with the fuel so. <laughs> and we had also um like i had topped off the fuel again before we left w while we were in puerto rico and again same thing happened it bubbled up and so i thought it was full no. it wasn't no it was not full and and we were planning to motor sail the whole way because you know it just gets you there faster yeah this was this was a delivery trip yeah. we had a we time had a schedule, schedule and so. we so it wasn't we would have loved to had a leisure sail you yeah, know sail the whole time would be fine it's not that we can't sail but yeah we we're on a schedule we have places we need to be at certain times and so this was a motoring sailing 48 hours it was supposed to be yeah, <laughs> yeah so where we ended up anchoring in turks and caicos was just right out in front of where what ended up being where the customs office was and there was also a diesel station where we were able to load some cans onto the dinghy and make several trips to get enough fuel in our tank to comfortably get us over to Providencialis and Grace Bay and um, that particular we it was just right out in front of the beach it was very exposed but we ended up spending the night there we were all super exhausted from the whole weekend and but we did but it wasn't a super protected or comfortable anchorage so we did leave the next day it was another overnight sail around to grace bay in providencialis island and we were able to anchor there and that's kind of was where we were really able to start enjoying the trip <laughs> or different aspects of the trip we were able to snorkel in the bay we were able to go ashore and, and check out the restaurants and get a drink yeah and, <laughs> get a drink though so, and and to load off for five minutes <laughs> from this dress <laughs> it was i can't say it, it was terrifying but it was a serious situation it could have turned a lot worse than what it was um, yeah the weather would have turned yeah um definitely grateful for the way it played out and like i say there's a lot of lessons learned There's, there's, I mean, sailing's going to be all sorts of new experiences and you're, and it's part of the appeal is you're constantly having to figure things out and fix things and figure uh, or make things work. Yeah, adapt to your environment. A lot of it, especially like nature, you know, 
the wind comes or the waves come or it starts pouring down the rain or anything in nature and all the elements can always change things pretty quick. <laughs> I look back at it and uh, I, I feel like we are, since that time, all of our sales have been much more planned and prepared um, than what that was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we get better and better every time we pull up the anchor to go to the next place. That's all I have. It's all for today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, and we'll have more to come. Uh, we, this will be just the first part of that passage, and we have next time we'll, be, we'll show our passage from Turks and Caicos over to the Bahamas. Uh, that was a whole ordeal in and of itself, just trying to get checked into the Bahamas. but. Uh, we'll go over that later. <laughs> so, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.